afternoon, good morning, good night, I guess, everybody. It's uh, the latest installment of MSP Business School, and we're pretty psyched uh, about what's going on this week. We're actually recording this very close to IT Nation, and we hope mm -hmm. to see a lot of you down there. Both, uh, both my company and Rob and Tim's company got booths. Um, yep. So you come on yes, down and see Sales there. Maturity and OSR uh, and myself in, in VCIO Toolbox right on the Emerging Technology Vendor Row as you're heading into the uh, into the Solutions Pavilion. And we'd love to chat with you. We're super Ray, what's excited. Your, what's your booth number? Yeah, I was I'm just going to ask that too. I'm booth 113. Ah, we're booth 108. Yeah. Yep, we are 108. So, you know, don't pass by Rob and Tim on the way to me because, you know, I know how, I know where you guys' heads are at. <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah. you can pass yeah. Brian Doyle on the way to us, though. I don't yeah. mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, we're really psyched that IT Nation is finally upon us. Yeah. Uh, this is always, you know, one of my favorite events because I get to see a lot of people that I've known pre-VCIO Toolbox that I don't get to see except once a year at IT Nation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send a shout-out to a buddy of mine who, unfortunately – has retired and is no longer attending IT Nation after almost 20 years of going. But uh, my good friend and the former partner at Fandotech, Joe Bucheri, is right now uh, circling, what, what do they call that thing? The Great Loop he's doing, which is a boat trip around oh, he's U.S., Canada, yeah. down Mississippi. Yep. He's been on the water since June. They're just finally getting back down to warmer climates and, yep. uh, you know, Good for Joe him. and I. That's Joe a, and I always laugh that we live 15 minutes away from each other and we see each other more at IT Nation. And I'm going to miss him this year. So there's yeah. my little shout out and send off to my friend Joe. I didn't know you were at Jerry. Fando Tech. Yeah, yeah that was, you were at Fando Tech, dude. I didn't realize we were competitors back in the day. Come on, man, Rob. How how do you not know this? Rob, Proactive. Just, well, I mean, it wasn't really yeah. a com it wasn't really a competition, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> So, so again, you know, since you've decided to make this about me today, um, Proactive <laughs> Technologies was my initial MSP. We merged with um, with what was once offsite technologies and Fuss and O'Neill Technologies uh, to become a greater company, Fandotech. And um, I was one of the four partners in that organization. It brought MSP and data center, hence where I got my first taste of compliance and first taste of 24 by seven living, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, where, where you're not just worried about the people, you're worried about the machines and everything. And, uh, and Joe Bucheri was one of my partners there. Bandotech was a legit company. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we um, ultimately was sold off to industrial defender, became part of Lockheed Martin, then cap Gemini. And yeah. now it's back under the hands of another privately held MFs, MSP. For those of you who are up here in, uh, in the Northeast, you might know Cooperative Systems, and that's who they are now a part of. But uh, oh, they had a grand loop. Oh, I them? didn't know that. Yeah. yeah it was. Really? Wow. wow. So anyone, circle. anybody besides Rob and Tim who are taking this as news that happened a year ago, I'm so sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Look, we, but, uh, we find these things out eventually. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the running joke was Joe Bucheri was the beginning and the end of it all. Joe Bucheri actually launched Fuss and O'Neill, who kind of orchestrated some of the, the merger that we all underwent at various stages with each acquisition. One of us would usually make an exit due to the overlapping skill sets kind of thing. And, and, uh, and that happened along the way. But Joe was the only constant start to finish. He actually went through six acquisitions with the same company. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow he must have been special. Yeah. I never met him. I, yeah. Like, I never... yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so Joe, you've gotten a pretty good shout out today, my man. And yeah. only because, you know, you're one of my favorite people I met in the channel and I hope you're having a blast. How could you not be yeah. spending a year on the water? That's good for him. Takes, takes a solid 10 to 12 months from what I've heard. Yep. Wow. <clears throat> So All right. For the, those of you that stayed in attendance now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for the two people left, uh, you know, Brian, I, I do want to say uh, that I kind of like I wanted to do this episode kind of for you. Uh, you. You're unfortunately cursed with that humble bug where you're kind of a humble natured man, unfortunately. But I really I'm really proud of you, man. I, I really am proud of Look, you, what I you've done with Pitch It uh, and how you've turned you, you've turned your pitch around to where you couldn't get that 30 second pitch in your first podcast, couldn't get it done to now your top three going in front of a national audience to really get out there and push your message. 
at, and I heard you, I think it was Tuesday when we were doing the channel program thing. And I heard your message, your 30 second pitch. And my goodness, Brian, it was on. That was, yeah, that was amazing. I, I think I was most psyched. I actually finished the 30 seconds. With one <laughs> second to spare. It was yeah, perfect. It, it, I have worked hard at the timing on this thing during pitch it. Yeah. Um, during our last pitch at final or, you know, our pitch at uh, our original event to get to the finals, I dropped the mic right on the five minute mark. It was beautiful. Like yeah. I was like, that's exactly it. They they could, yeah. that was the first thing they said. They're like, holy crap, you're to the second. And I'm like, yeah, I could have been two seconds earlier, but yeah. I always got one more sentence in my back yeah. pocket. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but that's just it. You know, I, I appreciate that, Rob, because for a guy that loves to talk as much as I do, I do not like to talk about me too often you know one of my favorite parts about this podcast is we're showcasing others we yeah. get to be the the median for others to get their stories out and uh, you know um it's kind of you know for me it's something i'm growing a little bit more comfortable with and it's honestly one of the things that i learned in pitch it um you know as part of this process was a, a little bit better at the self-promotion the product can't speak for itself most of us that are in startup mode are founder-led organizations and even though you know a lot of customers have said to me oh you guys are go-givers and this that and the other thing the truth is we are probably not as good as many at self-promotion and uh we'll see how i do today <laughs> <laughs> well it, and that's it look i i would say that's that's true with all of us right we uh none of us are excellent at talking ourselves up too much um but just you know going going back to that 30 second pitch I, unfortunately i wasn't able to make that but rob did say that you nailed it and i go back to when i did my initial 30 second pitch when sean sean laro put me on the spot and that thing was for anybody who who is out there listening to this now who happened to see that might as well don't look it up let's put it that way so so rob's yeah, tested fine, me it's here <laughs> Rob tested me here. He threw in my check. Can I do a 30 second pitch? And I will say, guys, I'm also good when there's a clock in front of me because I can accelerate or decelerate based on yeah, time. Yeah, based yeah on very that. true. Very so, true. Um, so I almost need the clock in front of me because uh, yeah. it tell I know where I'm supposed to be at different stages. And for those yep. of you, so I will do a pitch, but let's before that kind of go into a little bit of the prep process. Because I know yeah. one of the things that people especially technical founders who were not in a selling position pr previously struggle with is how do I get that sound bite? How do I get that elevator pitch? How do I get that quick go and get something that's going to get either the person to go, yeah, I'm interested in that or, Hey, not this yeah, time. Right. Maybe not. <laughs> and, um, you know, and one of the challenges in creating a pitch like that is really understanding what your message is that you want to get out. You know, Rob talked about not being able to do a 30 second pitch. Part of that is just VCIO toolbox inherently <clears throat> is a complex tool. It's got three modules. That in itself makes it tough to say 30 seconds, you know, talk about in 30 seconds. But what, you know, what, and what the program taught all of us, because, you know, you guys had an opportunity to do the pitches at sales maturity and did great as well. And, you know, the reality is, you know, you, you got to, you, you know, what I took away from this is you got to learn and how to put it. And it's what my, I love to say about doing QBRs. It's about them, not you. So what's the benefit that the customer is going to get and make sure that that comes out in your pitch. And once I thought about that, it distilled all this. How do I take this massive amount of capability into a 30 second framework? And I said, Hey, simply put, why did we decide to build this tool? What's it going to solve? And why should you care? And that's it. And once that became, you know, uh, you know, something, uh, you know, the kind of a guiding light for me, it became a lot easier to get it down to 30 seconds. You know, quite candidly, you know, this is where this program and for those of you that are thinking about getting into it, I totally encourage it because it's a program that's missed a mixture of training. We had 16 hour long trainings uh, during this where different speakers were brought in from both in ConnectWise and outside of ConnectWise to work on various parts of what founder-led organizations really need to understand. You know, it wasn't just how to pitch your product. It was, how do you get out there in social media? How do you understand where you, you know, what's your exit plan and where do you want to be across the modes and modes theory? You know, mm -hmm. how do you get there and build a promotion, you know, and promote a personal brand? How do you, you know, what, what, what were some of the other ones, guys? I'm probably missing them. We had Jay McBain come out and give oh, us the whole ecosystem. ecosystem. Oh, that yeah, one was, just, you know, totally yeah, invaluable. That was amazing ecosystem. Yeah. I still yeah, sit was, there and, and when he sat there one. and said, yeah, you only got to be in 2,100 different places, guys. 
Yeah. And, yeah. and that yeah. really boiled the ocean to go find your three and go yeah. become a yeah, leader exactly. in those three. Yeah. 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 It, it was good. That was a good one. <clears throat> he put that information up on LinkedIn too. Uh, that was that was a really good one. I like that. Uh, Michelle did a fantastic job. Uh, no, Michelle that, the, the first yeah. family, right? Yeah, the first <laughs> yeah. family. Yeah, did he did yeah. a really good job. Um, Joe did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there was a. It, it was if you can do it, do it. It's yeah. it's one of those things where if there's so much information that we learned and gathered and built, not only building our ecosystem from, you know, the speakers being on there and reaching out and having conversations offline with them, but just the knowledge that they gave you, it was, it was really nice. I liked so, it. You know, what did they give us? They gave us knowledge. They also gave us promotion. They helped make it introductions to people that we might not have gotten out in front of, yeah. at least at this stage in our growth arcs. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, one of the things that they did is I think we had, what, three or four sessions each we got to do in terms of webinars and podcasts mm -hmm. with different yeah, outlets. Four, four separate ones. Yeah. Then ConnectWise mm -hmm. had their own stuff that they did with us as well. It, it was just, you know, it, it really allowed you to get some visibility, to meet some new people, to bring into your ecosystem. And obviously these speakers helped with the intelligence piece, but above and all that, it was people looking at your business. So now I'm going to go back into kind of like the MSP mode, right? And I can't help myself here about talking about others. But, you know, when you go into the MSP mode, I know that everybody kind of struggles with how do I get seen? How do I get visibility? What are we trying to accomplish here? We all have a servant mentality. We want the work to speak for itself, right? And if we do a good job with the work, you know, friends and family should come, right? Yes. And, yeah. uh, and it's tough when we have to do a little bit of promotion. And I say that as somebody that natively has been in sales pretty much his whole life. And still, it's always been about the product I was selling, not about me, right? So this program really helps you craft that message and gives you an outlet to get constructive criticism by many people in a very short time. And if you're open to that criticism and you can embrace it, great things happen. You know, some people don't like the criticism. I love it. Yeah. Well, it's the only way you can get better, right? Like yeah. uh, there's too many people that kind of stick their head in the sand. Yeah. Uh, if they, on, on whatever they might be deficient in. And I think one, one good thing that pitch it kind of forces out of you is it makes you sit back and figure out what your why is and, yeah. and formulate that into a pitch. I mean, that's that yeah. for anybody out there who's interested next year. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. And it really helped us figure out, figure out our why. In the, you know, in the MSP community, sometimes you'll hear from guys, well, I know what my why is. It's to take care of customers' networks and give them, you know, a value yeah. price. But it's more than that, right? Why are you doing this? Why do you feel this is important? What are the outcomes you're trying to get from your customer? That's what's got to come out into your pitch ultimately, right? And it's, um, you know, it's fun. It's, it's fun to work on this and it's fun to get feedback. I always look at it kind of like when you think about a younger, so I run into a lot of younger engineers and I think many of you that have got a little gray hair like me in the industry have seen this once or twice where you get these young guys and they're at that early part of their career and they know some stuff and they think they know a lot more than they do, right? And they're like, no, 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 you just do it like this because that's the one way they've seen it and that's what yeah. they've been exposed to so far. And that's fine. Look, I'm not criticizing any of that. I was there at one point too. But if IT has taught me anything, it's every day I get stupider because hmm. every day I learn more and more about what's in this larger scale ecosystem feeding into what our customers use. And there's no way we can all know them all. So yeah. what do you got to do? No you got to find people that know that part and bring them into your, into your sphere, right? You've got to look at your pitch and go, where am I unique from the other thousand things that our customers trying to figure out right now? And why should I fit into whatever they're, you know, for us as vendors, the solution stack, but for MSPs, it's why should they be the vendor of choice? What are they bringing that makes them more unique? Because mm -hmm. if you do think you're just fixing things, then you've already set yourself up for that commodity blow, you know, yeah. where somebody comes in cheaper and you're going to get bounced at some point. That's right. Yeah. 100%. I, I, 
I kind of want to switch your gears here, Brian. It, we, we've talked a lot about what you should do to be in the pitch, like when you're trying to do the pitch. Yeah. But I do want to encourage this. This episode will be coming out on Tuesday, right, Brian? Today, today's yeah. episode will be. And so if you're down at IT Nation, I encourage you to come by the Pitch It competition and see three vendors who have perfected their 30 second pitch you'll they'll do it in a five minute span but you will see in their first 30 seconds how they grab your attention and then articulate their message over the next four minutes and 29 seconds like it'll be four minutes and 20 and 59 seconds and then they're gonna have six minutes of q a afterwards but you're gonna see the best of the 26 vendors right uh you know get up there and show their stuff so i really encourage everybody to stop by and check it out it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool yeah and I, I think to that point you know for anybody going to it nation a, a large amount of people go almost everybody goes either tuesday or wednesday right um it's at three o'clock on, on wednesday so if you're there there's it's it's just a it's a really good place to be i know last year was standing room only and i'm sure it'll be the same this year at it wouldn't surprise me if it's in a larger room. Um, yeah. so, I think yeah, they've I mean, got it in two rooms this year, Gatlin eight and nine, I think it is. So, yeah. uh, you know, if they, they've definitely expanded out a little bit, I'm looking for yeah. the year, you know, hopefully next year when you guys are in the final three, they do it on the big stage. Oh, that'd be you cool. know, cause I think, it, you know, cool. I, I think it warrants it. I, I think it's an, you know, you want to give the great opportunity to be awesome to be up there. Certainly for early stage founders, it'd be great to be up there to get, if nothing else, the action photos yeah, yeah <laughs> right, right, with, with right, all that behind right, you. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know, that's part of the growth trajectory too, you know, getting ready to go command 3,500 people in a room and talk to mm-hmm. them. Uh, some people get scared by that. I, you know, that's the part I live for. Like it's not yeah, about I like that. You know, I like self-promotion, but I, standing in front of people, the more the merrier. It's actually yeah. more comfortable when you got more. It's worse when you're talking to three. I, I 100% <laughs> agree with you. I can do hundreds and I can do that easy, but talking to two or three, it, it's more difficult, right? Yeah. There's more of a. I like a the an- anonymity of it versus I know all these people and they're looking yeah, at yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and knowing when you mess up, right? Knowing everything about what's going yeah. on. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. I, I really yeah. am looking yeah, forward to it. Great. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And in terms of, you know, crafting the pitch, it is amazing to watch, you know, as early stage founders, and I think MSP owners can relate to this too. You spend a lot of time talking to yourself, right? You know, that you're in a bubble You're you, while you go out and you see clients and all that. Really, when it comes to the strategy and the work behind the scenes and getting your branding, there's a lot of you talking to you. Maybe you talking to your wife or husband or some, you know, other, other friend, but uh, this made other people have to listen to you. And it really made you have to think about it. And if I go back to what my pitch was on day one and where it is now, it's almost, I, I bet you it's 75% different. Oh, wow. That doesn't surprise me yeah. at all. Wow. That doesn't surprise me. Were, were you feature I mean, rich in the beginning? Little feature rich, a little, um, you know, as much as I love to tell a story, it was the story, the story didn't have a rudder. You know what I mean? Uh, there was this okay. constant, you know, like obviously BCIO kind of toolbox, one of, our, one of our challenges is absolutely customer retention, but it's only one. Or I mean, that challenges out value props is customer retention, but that's only one. It, but it was a little too slanted to that. And let's face it, people, you know, why do people buy? They buy for three things. How can you make me money? How can you cost me less? How can you mm-hmm. get rid of risk? And retention was only speaking to the risk driver, right? So, you know, just this helped me kind of broaden the conversation and go, oh, yeah, we got some other good metrics that people probably care about as well. Very cool. Yeah. So, hey, so I know we're getting late in our time. So do you want me to try to do 30 seconds, Rob? Do, do you I, want to go I for think it or do you want to I leave everybody time. on a cliffhanger? I think that we should leave them on the cliffhanger and oh, show I... up at IT Nation <laughs> and hear the pitch. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would love for everybody to come, but not just for me, man. Nodeware is one of our strategic partners over at BCIO Toolbox. You know, we kind of like to consider ourselves the one-two punch of compliance. So, um, you know, we'd love to have, uh, you know, them. Thread is a fantastic tool for those that are, you know, looking to automate their service delivery and bring intelligence in. So come on down and hear all our pitches. But when it comes time to vote, okay, this will be my biggest moment of self Here we go. Here we go. Vote for VCIO Toolbox. 
Yeah, Brian, you did it. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, How did it feel? Yep, you yep. actually did it. We'll invest it back did. into the product, man. We're here oh, for you. Yeah, you know, that's what it's all about. <laughs> Brian Doyle. No, no uh, Aston Martins in the driveway after this is over. We're, yeah. we're talking, you know, it's it's time to keep the, the machine churning. But all kidding aside, we're excited to get the visibility that goes with it. You guys got to experience it. You know, we went into this thing saying, hey, we get four months worth of visibility. We got to the finals. It was like, cool, we get another eight weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, and That's right. And you know, even the even the loser comes away with steak knives. Thank you, Marvin B. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Uh any closing thoughts, uh, Tim, Brian? No, just good luck next week. I mean, we'll uh I'm sure we'll be seeing you probably on Tuesday. And yeah, spend, no, we'll we'll all see each other on together. Tuesday, no doubt. But uh for all you guys coming, you know, first make your plans, plan ahead, set up some meetings, stop by the booths. And you know what? Look for guys like us after hours because we'll be buying cocktails. We'll be there okay. all night long. Yeah, well, it's funny you say that. <laughs> Rob will be all true. night long, night one and night two. And then yeah. he'll be a part timer on night and three. Then, yeah. And then when you see him, his face will be green not because he doesn't want to be out all night, but because he's already done enough for, for the week. Yep. Yep. Robbie's, <laughs> Robbie's body's not what it is, what, what it used to be. Night Rob just, uh, he's not the same guy as he used to be. Don't you worry. Tim's got you covered. He does. Yeah. He does. Gotcha. We gotcha. Well, Brian, I, I really look forward to it. I, I'm really excited for you and I'm proud of you, man. And I, I look forward. Thanks. Timmy and I will be in Thanks, the back guys. starting the wave. So we'll we'll get everybody doing the wave back there for you and, you know, take it from there. Yep. And everybody else have a great time at IT Nation. And if you're not going IT Nation, just close out the year strong, man. We're at that final little launch pad. That's right. All right, fellas. All right. Good luck. Take care. Thanks. Yeah. Have a good one.